Hi, I'm Pete Duncanson, Media Arts Pastor, and I'd like to take a moment to say thank you for being here. If you are physically here with us today, please be aware that for your safety, we are practicing social distancing and ask you to respect those that are using precautions as well. If you'd like to know more about what is going on right here at Central, whether upcoming events or just learning about who we are, check us out on the web, Facebook, and yes, we even have an app for that. If the ministry at Central has blessed you and you would like to give, you can do that multiple ways. By using the physical boxes located in the back by the sound booth, through online giving, or even through our app. Thanks again for joining us today, and God bless. Yeah, I appreciate so much remembering Sister Marla, and uh, believing for healing for her as well. Go in your Bible today to 2 Thessalonians, the book of 2 Thessalonians. You and I know this is a very short letter, and yet there is much in here. We're going to just go through the little letter. It seems like it's about the, what we would say the end times and the second coming of Jesus. It is, but that's not the main theme. Look at verse 1 of chapter 1, 2 Thessalonians I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Those of you who are guests with us today, even guests on live stream, you've not been with us at Central before, please feel free to say amen. You have to type it, but I'll still hear it. And you uh, can join in with any comments. I, I won't have time to take questions. But thank you for joining. Those of you who are here this morning, if you're a guest with us, thank you. Verse 1, this letter is from Paul, Silas, and Timothy. We are writing to the church in Thessalonica, to you who belong to God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Verse 3, dear brothers and sisters, we can't help but thank God for you because your faith is flourishing and your love for one another is growing. I love that. I want to talk to you today about flourishing faith. Amen. Flourishing faith. Hey, there are a lot of things that you and I in this life hope we see flourish. Our finances, mm -hmm, our health, right? Maybe if you're younger, your education or your future career. Maybe if you're older, your retirement, your grandkids, who knows? But we're all about having things that flourish in our lives. But the Bible says the Lord Jesus Christ has a goal for you and I that our faith would flourish. Now, one of the things that many believers across this nation and around the world have realized in this pandemic, in these lockdowns, is how valuable our faith is on a daily basis, how necessary it is to allow our faith to flourish. It doesn't happen automatically. Just because we said yes to Jesus Christ sometime in the past does not mean that our faith automatically flourishes. And yet that's exactly what the Lord wants and that our love for each other would be growing. Mm -hmm. These two are interconnected. They are intertwined. As a matter of fact, John says in 1 John, if we do not love believers, the love of God is not in us. Now everybody can say that, and every, but listen... Loving other, I mean, loving them means you care about them and for them even when they do not see it your way. What is it? Doesn't matter what it is. They love Jesus, you have to love them. And love is not saying, I'll talk to you someday when you agree with me, but until then, stay away from me. Love means connected. Love means wanting what's best for them in the Lord, wanting to see them flourish as well. So how do we do this? How does this happen? Well, the apostle helps us to see that. Look at verse 11, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 11. So we keep on praying for you, asking our God to enable you to live a life worthy of his call. May he give you the power to accomplish all the good things your faith prompts you to do. Then the name of our Lord Jesus will be honored because of the way you live, and you will be honored along with him. This is all made possible because of the grace of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. Number one, the accomplishing of our prompts. 
I know it's a little cumbersome, but the New Living Word there, New Living Translation, uses the word that he wants us to understand the prompts and to accomplish all that our faith prompts us to do. And if we're really going to see our faith flourish, we have to do that. Now, you know how this works. It's a struggle to participate, to receive it, to walk in it, but you know how it works. The Holy Spirit prompts you. Maybe in your giving. Some believers ignore all those prompts. Well, I know my church believes in tithing. I know my church expects people to tithe who are believers, but I cannot understand how God, in this difficult world, in this challenging economy, my church has lots of money. Look at the size of it. It's, it's sitting on money. It's, just, it's buried all over the property. They just dig it up and bring it in and take it to the bank. They got so much that they didn't even want the lottery that the guy won the other. They didn't even want any of that. They got so much that my church doesn't need. Listen, it's not about your church. It's about your faith. It's about flourishing. And Paul says, if you're going to flourish in your faith, when you're, when you're prompted, you've got to step into it. And the promptings are really, really, really small, but steady. Small, but powerful. Small, but spiritual. Small, but real. The promptings. It might be in sharing your faith, starting a Bible study at work. It might be in being a witness for the Lord in your own family. It certainly, as Paul says, is how we live. Amen? The things we say and don't say, the places we go and don't go. Listen, this culture is always full of bright lights and lots of money. This culture is always, always full of the latest fashion and the greatest technology. And if the only prompts you're responding to are the prompts of the world around you, your faith is not going to flourish. It's going to fail. And that, my friend, is difficult for us eternally. We don't want failed faith. We want flourishing faith. Hallelujah. This is Valentine's Day. And so part of what we're getting at here is our relationship with God. I told you through this month I was going to try to, I felt led of the Holy Spirit to focus on relationships. So the relationship we have with God, but also the relationship we have with other believers. In spite of where they stand economically or racially or politically. I'm going to show you something this morning that you've never seen in God's Word. I'm going to introduce a reality to you that I struggled with this year, this past year, because many believers in, in across our nation and around the world just turned away from 2 Thessalonians. So we have to be careful because the goal for us is that our faith would flourish the goal is not that our life would be easier, more comfortable, that we would have more vacation time, that we would have, as uh, the prophet Ezekiel said when talking about uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, that we would have more leisure time. That's not God's goal for us. If we have that, if it's a blessing that comes our way, hallelujah. But that's not what we're pursuing. We have eternal goals. This world will end. Your life, my life, will come to a close. The curtain will come down. And there is a life after this one. And I am confident enough in God that that's where my focus is. That's where my faith is. And that's what I'm fighting for. I'm not fighting to get a better house in this life. If it happens, praise God. If it doesn't, I don't care. Amen? It's okay if the door opens, but that's not what we're pursuing. As a matter of fact, you might get it, and you might be prompted to give it away. You might be prompted to let go of it. See, God can prompt us, and when he does, the ball then is in our court. The prompting doesn't come from us. The prompting comes from him. Come on, let's look at it again. So we keep on praying for you, the Holy Spirit says. 
asking our God to enable you to live a life worthy of his call. May he give you the power. This takes power, divine enablement. That's when you go back to Acts chapter 1 and chapter 2 because that's where we find out about the power. Hallelujah. Yeah, the Bible answers its own questions. It fills in its own blanks, right? It does. He goes on to say, May he give you the power to accomplish all the good things your faith prompts you to do. Without the Holy Spirit, you'll argue yourself out of the prompts. You'll say it wasn't God. You'll say it's not for now. It's sometime later. I'm too young. I can't do it. I can't give like that. I can't, I can't be that kind of a giver. I have to save some for later. I have to be prepared for a rainy day. Listen, you better be careful because when God makes it rain, he might not let it stop. I remember a guy by the name of Noah. See, you can save up all you want to, but God can make it rain so much, your whole Rainy Dane fund is gone, and you're in debt a zillion dollars. you got to follow. i got to, I, come on, Doug, follow the prompts, because this is how God protects you from what lies ahead. Amen? Praise God. Okay, here's the second thing. Go to chapter 2 now. Praise God. Now, we're going to skip the part right now about the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But let's pick it up in verse 13. As for us, we can't help but thank God for you, dear brothers and sisters, loved by the Lord. We're always thankful that God chose you to be among the first to experience salvation, a salvation that came through the Spirit who makes you holy and through your belief in the truth. He called you to salvation when we told you the good news. Now you can share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 15 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. With all these things in mind, dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Keep a strong grip on the teaching we passed on to you, both in person and by letter. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us, and by his grace gave us eternal comfort and a wonderful hope, comfort you and strengthen you in every good thing you do and say. How? Do we have flourishing faith? How is that possible? Number one, by the accomplishing of our prompts. When we receive them, we do them. But it takes the power of the Holy Spirit. Number two, by the keeping of our grip. Hebrews mentions this as well. It says take a new grip. This is a theme in the New Testament. you got to hold on. Well, pastor, I thought it was up to God. He holds on, but you got to hold on too. Well, I don't know which part I'm supposed to do. Just do your part. He'll do his part. Well, I don't know what my part is. Just keep holding on. How do I hold on? Read your Bible. Pray. Make the things of God a focus, a priority, a number one in your life, and you'll find yourself holding on. I said to Sister Pam this morning the other day when I was walking, I had forgotten for a couple of days, but I mentioned her this morning, May is 40 years for me. I I told you that, didn't I? Did I say that this morning when I started here? In church? Yeah. How excited I am about that. I've already told you twice in the last hour. we got to stay a couple extra hours so I can tell you more. I remember that day like it was not just like it was today because the Holy Spirit was there and I had an encounter. I had a power encounter, as Pastor John Wimber used to call it. I had an experience with the Holy Spirit, but more importantly, he had an experience with me. Praise God. Yeah. Now, when we talk about the keeping of our grip, only in the gospel are we comforted by the Lord as we do good things for others. There are other people outside of the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ who do good things. I do not argue with that. I do not deny it. I see it all the time. I'm a recipient of it. And you and I are blessed because of the good of many people. But only in the Lord Jesus Christ do we get comfort. Because if you do enough good things, people are eventually going to bring opposition. It doesn't sit well with the flesh. It doesn't work right with those who don't have the gospel residing in their heart. So when you are doing good things and you do that for 10 years or 30 years and you're just trying to be a blessing because of the Lord Jesus Christ, the only way that you're going to be able to do that and not become resentful or bitter is when you have the comfort of the Lord Jesus Christ. You got, Paul said, don't be weary. 
in doing good things. For in due season we shall reap if we do not faint. And that's why here he says, come on, get that grip. It's not with your hands and fingers, but it's the grip that your soul has upon the things of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's a two-way street. When you hold on, he blesses. When you keep that grip tight, he meets your needs, not just financially, not just in your physical health, but he meets your needs emotionally, soul, at the depths of your soul. He's comforting you in spite of the battle. Glory to God. Thank God for his comfort. Amen. Praise God. I am one month away from getting on an airplane. And when that day comes, today is the one month for Pakistan. And I, it, something happens. I, it, I can feel it. But I was thinking, you know how I got started to Pakistan? You know that Paul had that call from the guy in Macedonia? I, it wasn't a phone. He had to have a dream. I had an actual phone call. And Pastor Asher said, would you come over here and help us? It was almost the same phrase. Would you come and help us? Thank the Lord I don't have to travel on a boat like Paul did. I don't have to walk up mountains and down valleys. I get on a nice, comfortable airplane, and I fly. Amen. And then I land, and uh, then, then you find out what Macedonia is like. It's not Macedonia. But. Jesus comforts us no matter what we do. And while I'm doing that, you're going to be here Still doing good things. Still reaching broken people and hurting people. Still encouraging people. Listen, if you've been through Cleansing Stream, one of the things you can do is take that to work or to your uh, network of friends and you can give them an invitation and tell them, this is life-changing. Well, Pastor, I, they're not even believers. Doesn't matter. Bring them anyway. Say they need it more than anybody. Amen? Doesn't matter. And if they're a believer, say this is going to be, this is going to encourage you and help you to be a, gr a better disciple and Jesus is going to use you to comfort others. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. You got amens on, online? Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay, now, not only in what we do, but in what we say, it's important for us to understand to keep, how to keep our grip. We have to be very, very careful that we don't... How we love people is critical. How we love them by action but also how we love them by what we say. One of the things that caused me a lot of difficulty in 2020, and I've waited and waited and waited to explain this to you. I want you to go to uh, chapter 2, but look up in verse um, 7. For this lawlessness is already at work secretly. And it will remain secret until the one who is holding it back steps out of the way. Now we interpret that to mean until the Lord Jesus Christ comes for the, for the church and the church is raptured. And I agree with that. Or some people believe it's the Holy Spirit and, and the Holy Spirit will be taken out of the way. Well, I agree with that because you can't take the Holy Spirit and leave the bride. And you can't leave the bride and or take the bride and leave the Holy Spirit. So it's not theological that I want you to see. I'm not arguing the reality of that, but look at twice. Now the King James says the mystery of iniquity. And if you have some of the King James Bibles, it'll have a footnote there about mystery. And it'll say hidden truth. This is a secret it's not only a secret from the unbeliever, it's a secret from believers. So this is why I struggle with all of the, the things. And now we have this instantaneous ability to, to put a video online or a, a statement and say, we have secret information about our government or some other government. No, you don't. It's secret. I didn't write this. I didn't anoint it. I'm just telling you what it says. It says it will remain secret. So I want us to be very careful as believers. Listen to me. All I'm doing is sharing God's word. But you and I need to be very careful about how we talk about these times we live in. 
and these government things that are going on. But pastor, there's corruption at every level. Always has been, always will be. But we need to expose it. The apostle said expose the unfruitful works of darkness. I get it. And you can and you should to a point. But when you tell me that you have secret information or secret knowledge about government things or secret societies, this is why we don't play with those secret societies. Because there are things in the darkness, spiritual realities, demonic things that are going to remain hidden. They have to do with how God is allowing everything to play out. And when you get in the middle of that and start speaking about it as if it's a certainty, you're saying that God isn't in control. Now, to, a, to an extent, now listen to me, believer. Just hear my heart. Just hear me. Okay, I can't step over into places that God's word does not allow us to go. And you can pull me as hard as you want. And I'm not going there. And throughout this past political season, people in the church were pulling my hair out like mad. I'm telling you, God has it in control. He always has and he always will. Are there problems out there? Yes. There are governments trying to destabilize the United States of America. And they're doing that primarily by fueling both sides to hate each other. Jesus said any kingdom divided cannot stand. My job is not to elevate a political idea, party, or position. My job is to elevate the Lord Jesus Christ, and when he is lifted up, all men will be drawn to him. My job is to tell you, you have to have the Holy Spirit to, to get the comfort from the Lord Jesus Christ and to stay true to what he's called us to, to hold on to your grip, to accomplish those prompts. All of that has to happen because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's, here's where that stuff takes you. I thought our previous vice president was a believer. I thought I heard believers four years ago saying he was a believer. I thought I heard people close to him saying he was a believer. I thought I heard unbelievers saying he was a believer. We can't stand him. And then believers, want. I, I read this week, that, that, at, at, to kill him. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, time out. No, huh? No way. I don't care who, what. He loves, she loves, whoever it is. When they say, I love the Lord Jesus Christ with all my heart, gang, you and I are in love with them. This world is against us. There are enough things we got to deal with. We don't have to create more of our own. People hate us as believers. It's all arrayed against us. But let's look at it again, verse 7. So let's be very careful. This lawlessness, now you can talk about the. I, I, listen, I'm not trying to, to redirect your conversations or criticize you or, or anything like that. Just hear my heart. Hear me as, as your pastor. 2020 was a horrible year to be a pastor. You don't have to ask me. I'm not complaining. You ask 10,000 other ones. Dig up the ones that took their own life. And part of it was because the church in America, churches everywhere, just, they were just shifting. We, we are not called to shift with the political winds. But pastor, you just don't, you didn't see, you didn't hear. I, I understand. And there are things I have no doubt, none, I'm not. Believe me, I'm not second guessing your position. You Praise God for you taking a stand for righteousness and goodness and taking a stand against corruption. Praise God. Keep doing it. But you have to draw the line on the things that are secret because they're going to remain secret until we're out of here. All right? Let me read it to you again. Verse 7. For this lawlessness is already at work. Now, I'm assuming that means when Paul is writing this. Would you assume that? Yeah, it's already at work, secretly. I know this is the new living. The King James says, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. And it will remain secret 
until the one who is holding it back steps out of the way. And then it's reversed, gang. You and I see all this corruption and all these government secrets and th- people against people and all that. And the moment we step out of the way, guess who gets to see the reality? Them. Yeah. Come on, read it in Revelation chapter 6. And they run into the caves and cry out, fall on us and hide us from the face of him and the great day of his wrath. See, when you and I stay true to Jesus Christ, he comes alongside of us and says, listen, I'm going to prompt you to do good. I'm going to prompt you to love believers and and to love and to share your faith. I'm going to prompt you to get involved. And when I do that, I'm going to protect you and comfort you while you're holding on. Because there are things that you can't know right now as a believer, and there are things the unbeliever can't know. But when I take you out of the way, when I lift you up to be with me in the clouds, they will see it and they will be terrified. For the day of the Lord will have come and the great day of his wrath and who shall be able to stand? Come on, child of God. We are looking forward to that day. We don't have to be troubled about this day. There's garbage. There's corruption. There's deception everywhere. For they deceive and go on being deceived. But Jesus Christ is coming back. Hallelujah. We need more young preachers, men and women, who will share it in the cornfields and on the streets of Wall in New York. Amen? We need young people who say, Jesus Christ is coming back. Get ready. Forget about the corruption of this world. Don't worry about the darkness. It's secret and it's going to remain secret. But what I can tell you is that which is revealed. He's the king of glory. He's the healer. He's the deliverer. And he's the soon coming king. Amen? Praise God. Amen. Thank you. Chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 1. Finally, dear brothers and sisters, we ask you to pray for us. Pray that the Lord's message will spread rapidly and be honored wherever it goes, just as when it came to you. I'm asking this today as well. Pray, too, that I will be rescued from wicked and evil people, for not everyone is a believer. But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. The Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. The footnotes eat the evil. And we are confident in the Lord that you are doing and will continue to do the things we commanded you. May the Lord lead your hearts into a full understanding and expression of the love of God and the patient endurance that comes from Christ. Number three, the leading of our hearts. How do we flourish in our faith, in this time in which we live? How, how do we flourish in our relationship with God on this Valentine's Day? He needs to be our everything. We belong to him. That's what Paul said in chapter 1, verse 1, verse 2. We belong to him. Praise God. When he says, who's my Valentine, he's looking at you and I. Amen? Praise the Lord. We belong to him. But how do we flourish in our faith? Number one, we've got to be obedient when we feel those prompts. And this is, I believe, the greatest challenge, at least for me as a believer. It's just the greatest challenge I have. We talked a little bit about it Wednesday night. But when we're prompted, we have to allow the Holy Spirit to bring us to obedience. Number two, we got to keep our grip. Just got to hold on. Paul said the Lord will do it through us if we'll let him. He'll allow us to be comforted as we do that and praise God for his comfort. And then number three, how do we flourish in our faith? We've got to follow the leading of our hearts. Do you see that? Verse three, the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. We're confident. Verse four, you are doing and will continue to do the things we commanded you. May the Lord lead your hearts. May the Lord, verse 5, lead your hearts into a full understanding and expression of the love of God and the patient endurance that comes from Christ. Now, the love of God is me experiencing it, but the expression is me telling others. Right? The experience is for me. The expression is when I show it. Amen? Now, I'm going to say something politically here that you might not like. I know this new president is doing some things and taking some stands. This whole transgender issue is just unbelievable. But he goes to church a lot. 
we'll be able to talk about that throughout these next few years. You can go, but if nothing gets in you, you're not going to be living the believer's life. But thank you for going, amen? It's easier to hear the word when you go to church than when you don't go to church. Uh, Listen, that's not in comparison to any other, any previous present. I'm just saying, I'm looking for positive things to hang on to because I see the incredible, insane darkness. I've told you before, I read from that uh, medical magazine, the worst thing we can do for people individually when it comes to their mental health and they're, they're not committing suicide, the worst thing we can do is to encourage them in this whole mess of you're born into the wrong body. That, that is so anti-Christ that it's not, but let's try and find positive things, amen? Okay, look at verse 13. Here's how our closing is, and this is the apostle closing. As for the rest of you, dear brothers and sisters, never get tired of doing good. Our hearts have to be led. And and earlier in that chapter, I read to you the patience. He wants us to be led into the patient endurance. And having this patience is really difficult. I mean, it's really difficult in our time today, isn't it? When you think about... The, the executive orders, you know, for, for three or four years with the previous president, we heard how, how horrible executive orders were. And, and pff, boy, they're just flying here. And we've got transgender in the school, transgender in the military, transgender everywhere. Now, you and I know that the end result of this is non-transgender have to be marginalized and eventually eliminated. You can't have both. Not in leadership. Not running the show. Not calling the shots. You can't have same-gender marriages flourishing and also non-same-gender marriages flourishing. So eventually, we have to be marginalized and then eliminated. For clarity on that, see Russia, China, North Korea, or any other nation that actually works against the freedoms of its people. All right, so just in case you don't believe where my heart is or you think I'm being deceived by America, listen, corruption is global. And and we know what's coming globally. It's a world government. Yeah, tell people that. That's not the secret. Anything that's revealed in the New Testament and, and the prophets, anything, yeah, that's fair game. But to say that you and I know things about secret stuff governmentally or or believers have this insight. Listen, gang, people pay big money to try and have special information or to have some uh, psychic or prophet give them tomorrow's roadmap. We don't need that. We've got the king. Amen? Come on, stand with me this morning. Let's stand in the presence of the Lord and thank him for flourishing faith in one second. The twinkling of an eye is actually quicker than a second, they say. In less than a second, everything about this world is going to mean nothing to us. We're not going to be impressed with who a senator or congressman or woman was. We're not going to be impressed with who was a CEO of which multinational corporation. We're going to be impressed with those eyes of fire and those feet of burnished gold. We're going to be, we're going to be impressed with those robes of glory. We're going to be impressed with the new name he's given us and the mark he's put upon us. We're going to be impressed with that place of the new Jerusalem and the presence of God. We're going to be impressed with the angels of glory singing the songs and we're going to be impressed when we hear the choir of the church of all ages lifting up the banner of Jesus Christ singing the songs that only you and I can sing. There was a a song years ago that says it's a song holy angels cannot sing. Amen. It's the song of the redeemed that you and I came through blood bought, spirit empowered and on fire for Jesus Christ and in that moment we'll say glory to God. So glad I stayed true, held on tightly, marched continuously. Forty years. It's not been all smooth sailing. Been a lot of challenges. But I'm so glad. I'm so glad the Holy Spirit came. I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be in ministry anywhere. There is no doubt. I don't even know if I'd be alive. And if I wasn't, 
I most likely would not have made heaven my home. But I'm here, and I'm holding on. I've held on 40 years. I've got less than 40 to hold on. It's getting a lot closer now. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, let's pray. Father, thank you today for the power of the Holy Spirit working in us and through us. God, thank you so much for your love for us, how you love us and cause us to flourish, and we thank you for that. And Lord, allow us, I pray, to love each other, not just here at Central, but here starting, to love each other across this nation and other denominations, others who have a different end times theology, others who have a different passion about how they serve you in the community. They want to put charity and acts of charity first. We want to put interaction with the Holy Spirit first, Lord. Help us just to love them anyways. When they love you, Jesus, when they call upon your name, they go to a, a different church, a different organizational makeup in the kingdom than we are. Lord, help us to celebrate that they're in church. Help us to find something positive so that we can together then work on the things that aren't positive. Lord, it's not easy to bring correction to a brother or sister. Those who are not looking at the soon coming of our King, they, they aren't shaken like we are. The corruption doesn't concern them. The seriousness doesn't scare them. We'll help them, Lord, but give us the, give us the patience, the patience, Lord, the patience. You're here this morning and your head's bowed for just a moment. Where are you in your faith? Are you flourishing? Do you feel today like you're really flourishing in your faith? Or has the pandemic robbed you of that ability to flourish? Has the lockdown kept you from feeling like you can flourish? Those of you watching me at home right now or in your office or in your vehicle and you know that you've not flourished for a year now and you've struggled emotionally and you've felt like giving up and even just taking your own life, I'm telling you, it's time for you to flourish again. There was a season when this virus had its grip around us, but I'm telling you now, we're stepping out of that time. We're coming out by faith. We're laying aside the fear. We're laying aside the worry, and we're stepping by faith into a season of flourishing. You can do this. It's in the Lord Jesus. But listen, if you don't understand the prompts, if you don't listen to the prompts, you're going to remain fearful. Yeah, how you give financially, that's part of it. That affects how you feel about a sickness or a disease, not just a pandemic, but when it comes to you individually. When you're diagnosed with a disease or a setback, a heart condition or cancer, then you're going to say, I, I need my faith to flourish. But it starts with all those prompts. Well, I give. I give five bucks here or there. I, I throw a 20 in once in a while. No, no, no. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about listening to the prompts and giving consistently. I'm talking about sharing your faith when it's not comfortable, but you know you've been prompted at the restaurant, in your family. All over this congregation this morning, we're going to take two or three minutes at the altar, and I am going to come. I'm going to, I'll spray my hands. I'll have my mask on, but I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to lay a hand on your shoulder, and I'm going to pray for you quickly before we get out of here today. And I'm going to pray that you and I will experience a fresh flourishing of our faith. We've had it before. And part of getting away, shaking off this heaviness, shaking off this pandemic and this virus, part of shaking it off is to step in to a place where we say to God, I need my faith to flourish again. Vaccine or no vaccine, I need my faith to flourish because eternity is just around the bend and I need my faith to flourish now so that I'm ready for then. As I pray, if you want to say, Lord, I want my faith 
to catch on fire again. I want my faith to flourish once again. I want to feel the flourishing inside. I want to feel the rolling winds of the Holy Spirit propelling me to the next level. I want you to step out and just stand in this altar. You can spread out, but just stand in this altar a moment and let's believe the Lord that our faith is going to flourish. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the one who died for us and lives for us in the mighty name of the healer and the deliverer and the one who makes sure that we're protected. We say to you today, may our faith flourish in Jesus' name. May our faith flourish even in this day in which we live in Jesus' name. Come on, church. That whole book of 2 Thessalonians, this is what it's about, that your faith will flourish. So this week, I know you're reading the Old Testament. If you're still with me, that Leviticus was a... Whoo, that was a, oh, that was tough one. It's R-rated. That book's R-rated. You couldn't even make a movie about it. <laughs> but if you've got time, jump into 2 Thessalonians this week and just ease through it little by little and say, Jesus, I hadn't seen it. My faith needs to flourish. Brother Ricky's going to lead us in worship, and I'm going to pray for you. A really crazy time. We respect the sickness and pandemic. I've told you for a year now. I would not bring a railing accusation against it. I just would not. God cautioned me about that, I, I felt. But I've also been waiting every day for him to say, press through it now, press through. We are, um, I think we're headed into just a beautiful time between now and Easter. I encourage you today in your faith, wherever you feel like you are, let the Lord prompt you by his Holy Spirit. But then remember, he promised to comfort you as well. When you say, I, I want to remember the promises of God, Yes, he's promised to take care of us and heal us. He's promised to provide, meet our needs financially. But don't miss out on those ones. He's promised to comfort us. That's good stuff, isn't it? Just to comfort us. Sometimes I just need comforted. I had, I, I, my walk yesterday wasn't very, just didn't feel very fulfilling. Pam said last night she had that kind of a day Friday. Just felt disconnected. That happens sometimes. But today I feel the comfort of the Lord Jesus. May he meet your needs. May he remind you that he reigns and rules supreme. May he remind you that the things that are secret are not secret from him or to him. He owns them. He's going to work it all out. He's in control. Government leaders will bow down. Demons and devils will come trembling before him. But you and I will be brought into his presence and we will celebrate together with him. May the Lord cause you to celebrate in your faith this week in powerful and profound ways. May he speak to you, and may those prompts be like golden nuggets in your life that you reach out and grab a hold of. And may our community be transformed because you've listened to the prompts. I bless you in your body today to be healthy and healed. I bless you in your finances to be prospered and provided for. And I bless you in your spirit to know that you're being prayed for by the King of glory right now. May his angels be assigned around about you today and every day in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. I love you today. Have a beautiful week in the Lord. We're here on Wednesdays. If I see you then, great. If not, I'll see you next week.